good morning students today we are going to do the poem television television by rodda so before starting with the poem let me introduce you to the poet the poet of television is rodda rodda was the most popular british writer of his times okay his writings uh, he was born in 1916 and he died in 1990 <clears throat> so his writings both for children and adults are still very popular in 2008 uh, the well known newspaper the times placed him 16th on the list of the 50th greatest british writers since 1945 okay so he was placed the 16th on the list 16th one six uh, he was born in wales he avoided university education and went on an expedition to new found land he served as a fighter pilot during the world war 2 some of his work for children uh, are which you might have come all might have come across it charlie and the chocolate factory matilda the witches fantastic mr fox the bfg the twits and so on uh, even the tales of the unexpected that was meant for uh, adults uh, is quite popular okay tales of the unexpected which is very much popular which is meant for adults uh, his main aim uh, in writing is to entertain and edify his young readers so he uses a light amusing tone most of the time most of his work have been translated in several languages of the world among the important awards which he received were the 1983 world fantasy award for life achievement and the british book award as children's author of the year in 1990 so these were the awards that he received now today we are going to do this poem it is television which is a didactic poem right it it makes an earnest appeal it's really making an appeal to the parents of all the children right uh, it is making an appeal for not uh, allowing the children to watch television so that is what you can see in this poem which you children might not uh, like it but still you can uh, just go through the poem and you can see uh, the bad effects of television what the poet has placed in front of us that you can go through that you can see in this particular poem so roald dahl is one of the most prolific of modern writers in english i have told you already about all this british poet and novelist and poet he was The poem television takes a comic look at a serious problem among young children today. So this is a serious problem. Serious problem. Children like prefer to sit in front of the television, watching it the whole day, enjoying it. That is the serious problem. What uh, the poet is trying to put over here. The poem warns us about the dangers of excessive television watching. So it's a must for children to know what what are the dangers that you are going to face later on in your life when you watch television excessively like this. So excessive doing of anything is very bad for your health. Eating to if you eat more also is not good for your health, isn't it? Same way if you sleep more, it's not good for your health. So for everything there should be some sort of limitation. So if you follow it. then you will remain healthy and happy throughout your life he tells us that the tv robs the mind of the power of imagination so the tv that is television robs the mind of the power of imagination and creativity so children won't be having this imagination and creativity in them they are going to lose this if they continuously watch television that is what the poet is trying to tell us through this poem so dal in his characteristic 
exaggerated style warns warns that we will become zombies if we keep staring uninterrupted at the television for long hours zombies what do you understand by zombies zombies are where in human being are not dead as such but living human being who are controlled by some natural forces like some magical forces right so that is what is going to happen over here so this magical forces with this with the power of this force what will happen over here uh, our soul or will work out our soul or our mind may not work out right only our physical self will work out so it will run without even our knowledge that is what is happening over here that is what happens to the children uh, this i can uh, explain to you in a better way you might have seen children watching television small children you take example at home you might have seen your cousins if you all have younger brothers sisters right they get interested and they get rolled up in certain programs like cartoons and all they will be watching it so carefully or so keenly they will be engrossed in those cartoons that even if you feed them whatever they dislike to eat they will eat it happily without even their knowledge so there they are in they are like controlled by some unnatural force right they don't know what they are eating at times they may not know what they are eating right they may not realize the taste even of it because they are so much engrossed in the television they simply open their mouth and give it to you when you place your hand right in front of them and they will uh, swallow whatever is put in their mouth so this is what happens when you keep staring uninterrupted at the television for long hours so if you sit long hours you become addicted to it totally you become addicted that you can see in small children how much they are addic addicted to television small children just starting from 2 3 years old right parents might be keeping them in front of it uh, to make their work easier right and these small kids get addicted to television and later on it becomes very difficult to get them back from this type of addiction so that is what is happening in the society nowadays right okay he advises us to read books for this will enable us to discover deeper levels of joy find fulfillment in life and open a whole new and exciting world for us so this is what throughout the poet is telling us in this poem is warning us to stop watching television and to get engaged with books so you will be getting you will discover deeper levels of joy that is what he is telling us you will find fulfillment in life and you will open a whole new and exciting world for yourself so you can see this entire poem is a message that is relevant in our times right now so it is an appeal by the poet to parents to uh, divert to divert their children from watching television to reading books so in this craze of that he is terming in this poem you can see that the is terming television as idiotic box so he is asking parents to divert their kids their children from the television from the idiotic box and to make them to engage them in books this is what you can see throughout in this poem okay let us begin uh, with the poem right now television by all that the most important thing we have learned so far as children are concerned is never never let them near your television set or better still just don't install the idiotic thing at all in almost every house we have been we have watched them gapping at the screen they loll and slop and lounge about and stare until their eyes pop out last week in someone's place we saw a dozen eyeballs on the floor they sit and stare and stare and sit until they are hypnotized by it 
until they are absolutely drunk with all that shocking ghastly junk oh yes we know it keeps them still they don't climb out the window sill they never fight or kick or punch they leave you free to cook the lunch and wash the dishes in the sink but did you ever stop to think to wonder just exactly what this dust to your beloved taught it rots the sense in the head it kills imagination jet it clogs and clutters up the mind it makes a child do dull and blind he can no longer understand a fantasy a fairy land his brain becomes as soft as cheese his pause of thinking rust and freeze he cannot think he only sees all right you'll cry all right you'll say but if we take the set away what shall we do to entertain our darling children please explain we'll answer this by asking you what use the darling ones to do how used they keep themselves contented before this monster was invented have you forgotten don't you know will say it very loud and slow they used to read they read and read and read and read and then proceed to read some more create scott gadzooks one half their lives was reading books the nursery shelves held books galore books cluttered up the nursery floor and in the bedroom by the bed more books were waiting to be read such wondrous fine fantastic tales of dragons gypsies queens and whales and treasure isles and distant shores